Welcome to Mathematics with Marlene. In this video, we'll be adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. So when their denominators are the same. So let's look at our first example. So here we have 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6. And you can see that their denominators are the same. They are both 6. So when we want to add these fractions, I'm going to use a picture just to start with. So let's say I have a chocolate with six equal pieces and I eat two of those pieces. But then a little bit later, I decide to eat three more pieces. What fraction of this slab did I eat in total? I ate five out of the six pieces. So can you see when you add fractions with the same denominator, your denominator in the answer is also going to be the same. But you're going to add the numerator values together to get the numerator in the answer. So 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6 is 5 over 6. And remember, it doesn't matter if you add, subtract, multiply or divide fractions. When you have your answer, you always need to make sure it's in its simplest form. You always need to simplify the answer if it can. But in this case, 5 over 6 can't be simplified. So that is our final answer. So let's look at another example. Here we have 2 over 8 plus 4 over 8. And for the last time, we're going to use a picture and visualize this for ourselves. So let's take a rectangle and we divide it into 8 equal pieces. And now I first color in 2 pieces and then I color in 4 more pieces. So in total, I colored in 6 out of the 8 pieces. So you see again, our denominator stays the same, but we add the values in the numerator positions to get the numerator in our answer. So 2 over 8 plus 4 over 8 is 6 over 8. But in this case, this is not our final answer because we can still simplify this fraction. And how do we simplify a fraction again? We get the greatest common factor. And how do we do that? We get the factors for the numerator and the denominator. So what can divide into 6, 1, 2, 3 and 6? And what can divide into 8? 1, 2, 4 and 8. And we want the greatest common factor. So the biggest factor they both have is the 2. So we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3 over 8 divided by 2 is 4. So our final answer and our simplified answer is 3 over 4. Now let's just quickly visualize our simplified fraction. So remember this first image, this first rectangle divided into 8 pieces demonstrates the 6 over 8. So 6 out of 8 parts is colored in. But let's take exactly the same shape and we demonstrate this simplified fraction. So now we're going to divide it into 4 pieces and we're coloring in 3 of those pieces. Can you see that the red parts of these shapes and the white parts of these shapes are equal? So they are the same fraction. The 1 is just simplified. The 3 over 4 is just a simplified fraction for 6 over 8. So they are equivalent fractions. They represent the same amount of red, the same amount of white. Now let's have another example, but this time without any pictures. So here we have 3 over 12 plus 5 over 12. And you can see that our denominators are the same. They are both 12. So our denominator in our answer is also going to be 12. And we're going to add the numerator values to get the numerator's value in the answer. So 3 plus 5 is 8. So 3 over 12 plus 5 over 12 is 8 over 12. But that is not our final answer because it's not in its simplest form. So how do I convert this fraction to its simplest form? I get the greatest common factor. So I'm going to get the factors for the numerator and the denominator. 
and what can go into 8? 1, 2, 4 and 8. And what can go into 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. So what is the greatest common factor? The biggest factor they both have. That will be 4. So I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 4. And 8 divided by 4 is 2 over 12 divided by 4 is 3. So your final answer will be 2 over 3. But let's just quickly look at one more example that will end a bit differently. This time we have 2 over 5 plus 3 over 5. Our denominators are the same, so our denominator in the answer is also going to be 5. And we add the numerator values together, and that is 5. Now we have 5 over 5. You probably already know what this means, but let me just show you in case. Let's have another rectangle. And we divide it into 5 pieces. And we color in 5 of those pieces. I've colored in the whole rectangle. So 5 over 5, if you want to simplify that, it is one whole. When the numerator and the denominator has the same value, it is equal to a whole. Now let's move on to subtraction. So for our first example, we have 5 over 7 minus 2 over 7. And you can see that our denominators are again equal. But now we're subtracting. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by visualizing this for ourselves. We're going to draw a picture. So we draw a rectangle and we divide this rectangle into seven equal pieces. And we start with our first fraction by coloring in five of these seven pieces. But now we need to subtract two of those pieces. We're not going to add, we're not going to color in two more pieces, but we need to subtract two pieces that we already colored in. So we need to erase two pieces. And now we have our final answer. What is left colored in? Three out of the seven pieces. So five over seven minus two over seven is three over seven. So can you see again that our denominators that are the same is going to be the same in our answer, but in our numerators, we're going to subtract the two from the five to get the three. And remember, just like an addition, we always need to end with our simplified fraction, but we cannot simplify this fraction even more, so that is our final answer. But let's have another example. So here we have eight over 10 minus three over 10, and you can see that our denominators are the same. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw our rectangle, and we're going to divide this rectangle into 10 equal pieces. And for the first fraction, we're going to color in eight of the 10 pieces. And just like in the previous example, we're going to subtract three of those pieces you colored in. You're not going to add or color in three more pieces. You need to take three of them away. So now we have our answer. So the colored in fraction is five over 10. Five of the 10 pieces are still colored in. Now again, can you see that our denominator's value stays the same in our answer? And we are subtracting the 3 from the 8 to get our numerator. But this is not our final answer yet. We still need to simplify our fraction. How can I simplify to get the simplified fraction? We get the greatest common factor. So the factors for 5 and 10. And what can go into 5? 1 and 5. And what factors can go into 10? 1, 2, 5 and 10. And what is the greatest common factor, the, the biggest factor they both have? The 5. So we will divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 10 divided by 5 is 2. So our simplified fraction is 1 over 2. And again, the picture that we have is our first fraction, the one that's not simplified yet. But let's go draw our simplified fraction as well. So we have a rectangle with exactly the same size, but this time we're going to divide it into two pieces. 
and we're coloring in one of those two pieces. Can you see that the red parts of the two shapes and the white parts of the two shapes are equal in size? So it's the same fraction, they are equivalent, the 1 over 2 is just a simplified fraction. So lastly, one example without any pictures. So our denominator are the same for both fractions, it's both 6, so we know that our denominator and our answer is going to be 6. And for our numerator, we're going to subtract the 1 from the 5 to get 4. But it's not simplified yet, we're going to simplify our answer, so we get the greatest common factor for the 4 and the 6. So what's the factors for 4, 1, 2 and 4? And the factors for 6 is 1, 2, 3, and 6. And what is the greatest common factor? It's the 2. So we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 2 over 3 is our final answer, our simplified fraction. And remember, just like in all my other videos, there will be a worksheet with a memo linked in the description box below. You can just click on the link to go and download the worksheet and memo if you want to go and practice addition and subtraction of fractions some more. And if you haven't already and this video helped you, please remember to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel and then I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.